Hello and welcome. So in this video we're dealing with the ISLM model. Um, we're going to deal with the equations, curves and diagram, and a monetary shock. So this video is kind of part of other videos. Um, previous to this I've gone through previous parts of this question um, and now we're starting with part E which reads suppose that instead uh, suppose instead that the money supply is raised from 1000 to 1200 um, how does the LM curve shift and what is the new equilibrium interest rate and level of income? Uh, if you want to see how everything that led up to here, check out the video description where you could uh, see links to those videos. So what's this question mean? Uh, suppose that instead the money supply has been raised from 1000 to 1200, how does the LM curve shift? So uh, where money supply initially, uh, if you look at the early part of the problem, was 1000, now the money supply is up to 1200. So the money supply has increased by 1200. So how do we find the new LM curve? Well, um, the LM curve is just uh, reflects the market for real money balances. It's where uh, money demand is equal to money supply. So for money demand, we were given this equation, uh, Y minus 100 R, and I discussed that in a previous video. And then the money supply is just the real money supply. So it's uh, the money supply that we were given here divided by the price level. Um, plugging in values for um, the money supply, you know, we're given that the new money supply is this 1200. The price level we've been given is 2 is equal to Y minus 100 R. And then, um, so now we just need to kind of simplify things to get our LM curve. Uh, simplifying things so that it's Y is equal to a function of the interest rate. Here is our new LM curve. So given the increase in uh, the money supply, our initial LM curve was this, y equals 500 plus 100r. Our new LM curve, LM sub 2, is y equals 600 plus 100r. So it's a bigger number. We get our LM curve is shifted out or to the right. So now what we're going to do is find our equilibrium levels of, real, of interest rates and income because the question asked us. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we set our two curves equal to each other. So we're gonna set um, the IS curve equal to the LM curve. So the IS curve is here. This is what we had found in a previous part for the IS curve. And we just found the LM curve equation, which is here. The IS curve was Y is equal to this term here. And the LM curve was Y is equal to this term here. So we're going to set those two curves equal to each other. So y is equal to both of these things. Now, simplifying and solving for r, we find that the new equilibrium interest rate, r star, is 5.5. Um, so how then do we um, find equilibrium output? How do we find y star? Well, we plug our equilibrium interest rate back into either IS curve or LM curve equation. It doesn't matter because uh, if you plug it into either one, you'll get the same solution. So plugging 5.5 into the, the IS curve equation that we found previously, we find equilibrium output or income of 1150. Plugging into our new LM curve equation that we just found, we find equilibrium output of 1150. Awesome. So we have our new equilibrium interest rate, 5.5, and our equilibrium output of 1150. So how do we show that graphically? Well, given some IS curve, you know, initial starting point IS curve, that actually doesn't change, so our IS curve, and our initial LM curve, LM sub 1 here, uh, we had equilibrium interest rate of 6%, or just 6, and we had equilibrium output of 1100. That's what we found in a previous part. So now that we have our new LM curve, LM sub 2, we see that's an increase, that's a shift out in the LM curve. Um, we found that right here. So that shifts out, and we have a new equilibrium interest rate, 5.5, and a new equilibrium output, 1150, which we just found. So given an increase in the money supply, you know, M going up, what, what happens to our economy? Well, the LM curve shifts out, the uh, e equilibrium interest rate decreases, and the equilibrium output increases. So once again, you know, we have a lot of different ways to think about this. We were given the shock. And we went through our equations to find out the effect, right? Uh, we just plugged that new change in our equations and we found the new equilibrium levels of, um, of interest and um, output. We also used our diagram here. So given um, that shock, we know that it's a shift out in the LM curve and we could see the effect on interest rates and output. 
Uh, and then also we should think about things kind of more intuitively, so with neither equations or a diagram. So the intuition in my mind, the thing that's driving this result is the theory of liquidity preferences, which is the idea that if there's more money out there in the economy, and assume that the demand for money is negatively related to interest rates, that is, if the cost of borrowing money is cheaper, then people borrow more money. So with that assumption, then the results of an of an increase in money in the market for real money balances will be to drive the interest rate down. So R is down, given this. Um, uh, we see that with the equilibrium interest rate being lower. So with a lower interest rate, investment's going to increase. Remember, investment's negatively related to the interest rate. So with increase, uh, the reason why that is if you, the borrowing cost is lower, then businesses will borrow more. So with investment up, that's going to drive up output. So that's how we have our decrease in the interest rate from 6 to 5.5, and that's how we have the increase uh, of output from 1,100 to 1,150. Uh, great, thanks. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and um, have a look at the video description for the previous and next parts of this question.